Here's Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney. In 2023, whether it was the regular season or the postseason, this was the most lethal starting five-man lineup in the entire league. And the truth is, the competition wasn't even close. Whether or not you compared them with Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and the Boston Celtics, or with Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and the Denver Nuggets, or with any other teams for that matter, as per the numbers, this was the deadliest lineup by far. I mean, just look at the stats yourself. The five-man starting lineup of the defending champions did well and outscored opponents by 12 points when they shared the floor together, whereas for the Warriors, that figure doubled to 24 points. Sheesh, guys. That's a factor of two, which is pretty scary when you consider what it means. Well, what if I told you that for the 2024 NBA season, that that's only going to be the tip of the iceberg? Yeah, that's right. I ain't kidding. The 2024 Golden State Warriors, if they could stay healthy, have an insane amount of lineups they could use. And truth be told, the rest of the NBA isn't ready. Many will say I'm biased and that I'm over-exaggerating, but I'm not. And I'm about to prove it with numbers. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the scary truth about the Warriors' 2024 death lineups. The first lineup the Warriors will use to decimate the NBA next season is, you've guessed it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it is a pretty darn good rule of thumb. And like I just showed, the combination of Curry, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond, and Looney was the best starting five-man lineup in the NBA last season. And despite Chris Paul coming into the mix, and despite him telling reporters that he might be starting, I doubt Steve Kerr is going to cave into demands and change anything here. What's also frightening about this is, uh, Okay, so in 2023, the Sacramento Kings were officially the highest scoring team since the 1984 Nuggets, and this was enough to get them to the third seed in the West. But yet, their top three most used lineups pales in comparison to the Warriors. I mean, none of their top three combinations came even close to what Golden State was producing. So at this point in time, it's pretty safe to say that Golden State is going to have one of, if not the best, starting five-man lineup in the league for 2024. There's no ifs or buts. This is a fact that we can all agree on. And then, this is where things start to get scary. You see, the Warriors bench was their main weakness in 2023. Or, in other words, the non-Curry minutes was their Achilles heel. But now, things are going to take a 180 degree turn because their bench is going to be made up of these units. Chris Paul will obviously be leading them as the point guard, with third year Moses Moody acting as the shooting guard, with Kaminga playing the small forward, with Trace Jackson Davis acting as the power forward, and then with Dario Saric playing the center position. Now, the only knock people will have on this lineup is Chris Paul and his age, but there's four great reasons why I don't see that as an issue going forward. First off, last season was one of the worst seasons he's had in recent years, but he was still just about as efficient as he's always been. Second off, the man still dunks in practice and looks like he's in terrific basketball shape. Third off, instead of averaging 32-ish minutes like he's done in recent years, his services will only be required for about 20 minutes per game which should help preserve his body for a deep playoff run. Then lastly, Steph Curry and the ownership obviously trust him enough to bring him on board, and hey, that's good enough for me. I mean, Steph is one of the most competitive guys in the league, and he's obviously gunning for another championship, so an important question to ask is, why would Steph be on board with having CP3 in the mix if he didn't think he could contribute tremendously to another chip? Then when it comes to the ownership of Joe Lacob, this dude is literally paying an arm and a leg for the roster as they're way, way into the luxury tax. Now think about it. Why would he pay an extra couple of hundred million dollars if he wasn't confident about the returns he'd be getting? Anyway, back to the topic of lineups. 
This second unit coming off the bench is arguably the deadliest bench we've seen in recent years. I mean, here we have CP3, a top 10 point guard of all time, leading uh, Moses Moody, who shot 36% from downtown during the regular season and bumped that up to 59% during the playoffs. Jonathan Kaminga, who had an effective field goal percentage of 58% during the regular season and bumped that up to 60% during the playoffs. Trace Jackson Davis, a 6'10 rim running big who was the runner up to be the best college player of the year. Then last of all, Dario Saric, a stretch big who's been a champion and an MVP in several European leagues. This is the bench unit that Chris Paul is going to lead. And my goodness, guys, to add more smoke to this fire, CP3 is probably aware that this is his very last chance of winning a title, so he's likely going to be more motivated than ever to succeed. So as of now, we have two lineups that'll likely dominate the vast majority of starting fives and benches in the league, and I'm sure we can all agree on this. Some of y'all may be saying though, but what if both Steph and Paul are on the bench? What do the Warriors do then? Well, here's just the lineup Steve Kerr could use to hold down the fort while the two star point guards are out catching a breather. I call this the Warriors all defensive lineup. And although it might not score a whole bunch of buckets, it'll prove to be quite the defensive shield that'll freeze teams in their tracks. The young glove will be guarding the point of attack, and if the opposing guard decides to switch off of him, two-way wigs will be waiting. Then we also got the athletic monster Kaminga in there, with Draymond acting as the anchor, and Jackson Davis, who averaged three blocks last year in college, acting as the last line of defense. For a few minutes per game, this lineup can come in and become the ultimate shield that can lock teams up during the non-Curry, non-Paul minutes. Then, after playing defensively, the Warriors could easily switch things up and go completely on offense and, uh, just check out this lineup here. Curry, CP3, Clay, Wiggins, and Sharich. When it comes to positionless basketball, it doesn't get any better than this. I mean, first of all, Everybody could shoot. You can't leave anyone open, otherwise it's a bucket. Second off, you have three players who could play in the post if there's a mismatch. And then, well, you have two of the best point guards in NBA history in there as well. Oh, and before I forget, the one overlooked part about this offensive lineup is Dario Saric, who will play the center position and is a threat from deep. This will mean that opposing teams' bigs can't stay in the painted area and guard the rim, and that'll give players like Steph and CP3 all the room in the world to operate in the mid-range or get to the rim. Sheesh, guys. Can you smell what The Rock is cooking? I can't wait to see this lineup share the floor together. I mean, it'll practically be unstoppable when it comes to getting a bucket. And the scary truth about this all is, I haven't even gotten to the 2024 death lineup yet. You've probably already guessed it though, and here it is. Steph Curry, Chris Paul, Klay Thompson, Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond Green. This will probably be the lineup that closes many games, and if Draymond takes the 2024 season seriously and practices his open threes and shoots them in the high 30s like he did in 2016, or in the low 40s like he did during the 2017 playoffs, where he shot a staggering 41% over a 17-game span on 4.6 attempts per game, then who's going to stop this group? The answer is no one. At this point, the only ones that can stop the Warriors are the Warriors themselves. Health is going to be their biggest enemy in 2024, but like I stated, they're really deep this year, so Steve Kerr shouldn't have to resort to running his players into the ground in order to avoid the play-in tournament. One thing I also got to mention is Moody and Kaminga are both now entering their third year and should both be serious X-Factors in 2024. I mean, they've both physically grown, they've both improved considerably in skills, they've both been around the Warrior system for years, and now, the million dollar question is, just how much better will they become over the course of another 82 game regular season where they'll be playing alongside the one they call the Point God? 
Ladies and gentlemen, the 2024 Warriors are coming.